One of my dreams came true. I am the owner of an analog mixing console from the 70s. Normally, professional consoles from this era are really expensive and they can cost you as much as a Tesla. I'm talking about brands like SSL, Neve, API and in Germany Neumann and Studer. That's the reason why I built this console myself, I restored it, I added a lot of extra features and that's what I want to show you in this video. It is an KSG625 from VEB Studio Elektroakustik Leipzig. It was produced between 1972 and the early 80s in Leipzig in Germany. Equipped with in and output transformers and discrete design which is very close to the legendary Neve 1073, it has a lot of real vintage mojo. I got it really cheap from eBay from an old guy who was happy that a young person was interested in all technical stuff. I paid 500 euro for 12 preamps, 4 EQs and 3 summing amps. Incredible value for that amount of money, don't you think? You might be wondering why these desks are pretty cheap and unknown compared to others. There are a couple of reasons. They are produced only for a short period of time for the East German GDR as a portable mixing desk, especially for radio. So there are not many units out there. Also, in the original condition they are not usable in modern recording environments. They have all Tuche and Trennklinke connectors which don't match with XLR or TRS. Besides that, there is no phantom power, no phase switch and no mute or solo button. Also, the preamps have no direct out, so multi-tracking is impossible. And the last point, this applies to all vintage units from the last century. There will be some issues with broken parts like dry capacitors, corroded switches or burn transistors. You see, there's a bit of work, let's get started. The console has a modular design, that means you can take out every single channel. This is common for professional mixing desks and helpful if you have to repair or exchange some channels. They are powered and attached to the console with a 15 pin connector. Here you can see the cabling in the chassis, where all channels sum together. The first step when restoring vintage gear is to replace the electrolytic capacitors. They use a fluid electrolyte that can be dried out or leaked over the years, so after 50 years it's a good idea to replace all of them. As expected, 11 out of 12 channels had some problems. Especially the rotary switches were corroded and I had to spend a lot of time cleaning them. One advice for everybody who wants to restore a vintage unit. Take the biggest bottle of contact spray you can get. Let's have a closer look at the preamp modules. Originally, there are two rotary switches for input gain and panorama. One potentiometer for your aux bus and one volume fader. I left the input gain and pan the way it was, but I replaced the aux pod with a toggle switch to have a mute and solo option. I placed the aux pod on an additional panel, which I will show you later. Aside from that, I wanted to have the possibility to use the mixer as a summing mixer, and therefore every channel must have the exact same volume, and that's not possible with these high tolerance vintage faders. So I decided to add a three way switch on top of every channel where I can control the volume. Let me explain it really quick. Position 1 means everything is original. So the fader is active and is controlling the output volume. This is great for tracking. Position 2 means when the input gain is set to 0 dBm, the output gain is calibrated to minus 15 dB full scale, which is around 0 dBu in the analog world. <laughs> Don't worry if you're not familiar with these audio level terms. It can get a little complicated. All you have to know is, when every switch is set to position 2, every channel has the exact same output volume and the fader is no longer active. Position 3 is the same principle with the input gain set to minus 15 dBm. In this position the output is calibrated to 0 dBm as well, but you get a little bit more coloration from the input transformer and the first transistor stage. To realize this modification I produced a small PCB with two trim pots. For adding phantom power, phase reverse, a balanced direct out for every channel and more routing options, I decided to design an additional PCB. Here it is. For balancing, I'm using the SSM2142 chip. In my opinion, this chip is as good as a transformer. Soldering the XLR and TRS connectors directly onto the PCB makes it easier to place them on the back panel. By the way, I designed and etched all PCBs by myself. If you're interested in how to produce your own PCB, I can make a separate video too. To connect the mainboard with my self-made PCB, I replace the old school Tuchel connectors with PCB connectors and wire everything up. Call me crazy, but I wanted to have even more flexibility, 
So I decided to add for every preamp and for my two bus a 500 slot. They are equipped with EQs, it's the Studer 169 EQ, of course, also DIY projects, some external preamps and for my two bus a Rupert Neve tape simulation. And on the back you can see my power supply. I decided to have an external power supply just to avoid some hum coming from the transformers. It's a complete new design, this is not original because I need a lot of different voltages, plus 24 volts for the main unit, I need 12 volts for all the LEDs and the VU meters, I need plus 48 volts for phantom power and minus and plus 16 for the chips. Here's one channel from top to bottom. On the top you have a nice looking VU meter, then the 500 slot equipped with a Studer EQ. On the mid panel we have a switch for phantom power, phase reverse and you can insert the slot or you can bypass it. Aux pod, I think you know what it is. This is the button I explained earlier for the controlling the volume of the fader, input gain, panorama, solo, a mute and of course the volume fader. My grandpa was a carpenter. I'm lucky that I can use his workshop to realize all my projects. Although most of the machines are as old as my console, they work pretty good and precisely. I use solid beech wood for all the pieces that has to be strong and acacia wood for paneling. The hardest part was to manufacture the 500 slots, because I had to be extremely accurate to create the correct dimensions. Overall, I needed 4 days to finish the new wood housing. Gluing all the pieces together was challenging. I'd recommend getting some help like I did from my girlfriend, because you have to be very fast since the wood glue dries quickly. You can imagine how stressed we were gluing around 50 pieces together. I used walnut stain and true oil for the finish. I've tested a lot of different wood oils, but I ended up with true oil because after a few coats it feels like kind of lacquer and it gives a nice warm and expensive look. I know these clips and the music were epic, but this project cost me more than two years of work, so I'm really happy that everything is working now. I'm happy that the noise level is pretty low, and in my opinion it sounds really good. I will show you the sound in the next video, so if you are interested, that's a signal for you to click on the subscribe button. And as always, if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. That's it for today, this is my little baby, and as I said, a new video will come in two weeks, you will hear this thing in action. Thanks again for watching, see you next time.